Older WANs often consisted of data links directly connecting remote mainframe computers. Today's WANs connect geographically separated LANs. Here's a sweet chart that shows some of the basic bandwidth latency and JITA statistics about different types of traffic one might expect to go through in a WAN. It's all pretty basic stuff. If you don't understand this, you should probably leave now. Designing a WAN essentially consists of the following. Selecting an interconnection pattern or layout for the links between the various locations. Selecting the technologies for those links to meet the enterprise requirements at an acceptable cost. Many WANs use a star topology so that when an enterprise grows, a company can add new branches. Telephone, ISDN, or X.25 are not suitable for WANs that require rapid response time or low latency. ATM, frame relay, and X.25 networks carry traffic from several customers over the same internal links. There are many advantages of the three-layer design model. Scalability, ease of implementation, ease of troubleshooting, predictability, protocol support, and manageability. The star topology is implemented. Enterprises are connected to networks from access links and enterprise to core links when it is necessary. Anywhere from three to ten networks are linked point to point from various regions. An alternative way to design a WAN is to use the internet for traffic between LANs. This is useful for smaller enterprise WANs because it saves a great deal of money. A disadvantage to this design is the vulnerability to attacks from the internet. But the money saved on WAN connections can more than pay for the extra security.